to all of you unconventional conventionists out there. Welcome to Rocky Talkie, the show where we talk about anything and everything related to Rocky Horror. I'm Aaron. And I'm John. So, and that's it. That's it. It's, I'm Aaron, I'm John, Nikki who? I feel like we're missing something here. I'm not. So this week has been a little fucky for everyone. We were considering going dark for the 4th of July holiday, but we figured instead the two of us would just hop on the mic and record a little mini episode to share some community news and fill our listeners in on the fuckery that's been going on in our lives. And boy, is fuckery right. Yep. So <laughs> so because of the holiday weekend, right, we were, we were initially planning to record this episode a little early. Nikki was going away for the 4th, and we were going to record on the Tuesday before she left, but then, well, everything went fucky and disaster struck. And I think that we both have some stories here, so uh, uh, let me let me tell you my shitstorm first, John. So, we've been talking about moving, right? I, I know that you're moving, you know that we're moving. We had an apartment all lined up. We were so excited for it. And then... New York brokers be brokers, and New York rental agencies be New York rental agencies. That apartment fell through last Thursday, just absolutely nothing we could do about it. I mean, it turned out to be for the best, but like completely went to shit, so we dropped everything on Thursday of this week, and Meg and I went back into the city to do another round of apartment hunting, and oh my fucking god, I did not want to have to do that again. So we went back into the city, we were running around all over for, you know, all day Friday, finally found a place that we thought was really nice after seeing a bunch of apartments that turned out to not even be on the market. Gotta love that, right? We had one broker that was showing a bunch of stuff, and turned out, no. None of that stuff was actually available, uh, so we wasted an entire morning with that, but fortunately found something in the afternoon. We we hope, fingers crossed, this will be the one. We were able to get in an application for it. We're doing better. Hopefully it will all go through, and we will be back in Manhattan by the end of the month. Well, yeah, <sighs> but what about the refrigerator? Oh, go fuck yourself. That is still an ongoing battle. I, fi- I had to buy a new fridge. I, that's what ended <laughs> up happening. I had to buy a new fridge, and it is being delivered in a couple of days now. I will get to enjoy it for all of about five days before <laughs> someone else. I, I, I'm going to make so much fucking ice, man. Yeah, I'm just- <laughs> take all that fucking ice, and you're going to take it all the way to your new apartment. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to leave the doors open. Whatever. I'm just going <laughs> to air condition my entire house with that fucking fridge so I get like a good a good amount of use out of it before I have to give it over. No, honestly, that's a great idea and I think you should do it. I didn't even know for the longest time because I'm a piece of shit New Yorker and I rent and I don't buy. So I didn't even know that people had to actually buy fridges until recently. <laughs> and that's a shame. I'm sorry for everyone listening here who actually had to buy a refrigerator at one point. It didn't just come with your property. You, you thought that Lowe's just had them hanging out in there for funsies? Like yeah, I thought, yeah. I thought, yeah, I thought just rental agents and whatnot would have to go in and buy them and landlords and stuff. I thought it was just for landlords. Who buys a fridge? Not me. Me, I mean, my apartment's coming with a fridge. Ooh, right. Yeah. yeah, you've got some fuckery too. Yeah, so for everyone listening, as you all most likely know, just like Aaron, me, Adam, and Savannah are also in the process of moving because our apartment complex is Satan. Mm. Uh, And like the bad kind of Satan, not like the cool hip kind of Satan. It's been really bad the past uh, year and a half, and we have finally been on the market to look. So our lease actually ends on August 1st, so we have to move out before then. So July 31st was originally our move out date, and then we were going to move into an apartment on August 1st. We met this one really, really nice realtor through Bohemia Realty Group. Shout out to Ryan Mack of Bohemia Realty Group. Ryan, if you end up ever hearing about this, we fucking love you. You are a miracle worker. This motherfucker showed us so many no-fee apartments just out of the kindness of his own fucking heart. There was one day he showed us a bunch of apartments that were in our general area, which is around like the West Harlem area. We found one that we really liked. We ended up not going for it because by the time we got home, it had already sold because that's how New York markets are. The second time that we went out, (laughs) 
Uh, we found another one that we really liked. We tried to apply for it. It was gone before we got home. And then there was this one day where Ryan was like, you know what? That's it. I'm showing you like 40 apartments in one day. And you're going to give me like a top five because this is getting ridiculous. So we found this one apartment in the Heights that we absolutely loved. And then we found a second one that we absolutely loved. We went home. Uh, turns out that they were still both available. We got all of our information. We got the application in like immediately that day. And then the next morning, obviously, we woke up and it was gone because that's how New York City works. However, our third choice was available. Okay. And the third choice is actually a four bedroom. We were looking at three bedrooms. This is a four bedroom, 1300 square foot apartment in the Heights. It's gigantic. Ooh. It's bigger than my parents' house. <laughs> It's, That's insane. Yeah, it's bigger than my parents' house. It's bigger than my friend's house who have, like, three-floor houses outside of Philadelphia. It's a great place. Under 3000 a month, which is just ideal for the price. Honestly, a steal. And we are in the process of getting into that space. Now, this place, because of how popular and how many people are applying to live in this apartment complex... We are actually not able to move in on August 1st. We actually have to move in on July 15th. So as of the recording of this, we have 10 days to pack and move to this new apartment. I hope you get in an accident. <laughs> and it can't come soon enough, it sounds. <laughs> yeah, it really can't because we're on like a nice, quiet residential street. Obviously, there's going to be, like, parties on the streets and whatnot, but, like, I don't have to deal with that anymore. We're on the second floor in an elevator building, so Ooh. even if the elevator's broken, we just walk up the stairs because we are able to do that. No pet deposit, no pet rent. Uh, we are right across the street from a lot of folks in the Rocky and the NYC Rocky cast. It is a fantastic area. It's a fantastic apartment, and honestly, I'm happy that we ended up here rather than the first two. Now it's just the process of actually moving out of this complex because my management company refuses to schedule my move out date. So that's what I'm trying to do now. So for everyone listening at home, clearly we're doing some shit right now. <laughs> yeah. And who fucking knows where or what Nikki is doing right now? I just assume that she, you know, had an accident with a bottle rocket or something. I just assumed that she was pillaging tombs in Cairo, Egypt or something. Oh, well, you know, very similar things. Very yeah. similar things. <laughs> but anyway, that's what's going on with us. We just wanted to hop on mic and share our saga with our listeners, who we know care so much about our tribulations, to wish all of our listeners a happy holiday and share some fun community announcements with you. But first, let's kick it with some global news. Uh... news all right so we got a handful of global news bits this week but not nearly enough time to dig into them so we're gonna rapid fire through a few of these and as always if you want to know more check out the full articles in our show notes christian levercombe made a quick facebook post last week that showed off the cover of the script for this year's uk rocky horror show a few weeks back Ori aduba posted his version of the script and we noticed then that it was sporting a 2019 revision date well, Christian's post, however, has a big ol' revised 2020 notice on the cover. Oh. Mm. <laughs> so look out. If you've seen the UK stage show before, there might be some changes in store. Though, generally, this is probably stuff like blocking adjustments or modifications for different staging. Maybe they got some revised set pieces, right? Those kinds of, like, relatively expected changes. But, but still, it's a cool note, right? The start of the UK Rocky Horror Show run is just a little over a week away in Southampton. We are super excited for everyone across the pond, and there's plenty of locations on the tour where tickets are still available. Yeah, if you make it to one of the shows and you notice some of the differences from years past, I mean, we'd love to hear about it. You know, what to do, head on over to rockytalkypodcast.com and drop us a line. Second up, Richard O'Brien did an interview that was published last week with Gay Express, a New Zealand-based publication that focuses on the LGBTQ community. In it, Richard opens up a bit about gender identity and his work with the wider gay community and the New Zealand Rainbow Charitable Trust, which is an organization that aids in education for the queer youth. 
O'Brien also told the author a number of stories, and all of them seemed to start with everyone's favorite Richardism. Well, I had just had a jazz cigarette, and... (laughs) (laughs) Apparently all good stories start with a joint. Well, at least all of Richards, right? So, speaking of news from Down Under, John O'Hara has just been announced as the new Frankenfurter in the next Australian production of the Rocky Horror Show, playing in Hobart later this year. Since his first run in Richard O'Brien's The Rocky Horror Show in 2008, John O'Hara has appeared in everything, including Wicked, Cats, Cabaret, Priscilla, School of Rock, the list goes on and on. Before Rocky this year, he will be appearing in Tommy for the Victorian Opera. Yeah, and in 2015, John's one-man show, Dedications, premiered to critical acclaim at the Adelaide Cabaret Festival, which was curated by everyone's favorite Bert Schnick, Barry Humphreys. He took that show on the road touring all over Australia. So, from us all, hoopla, John. Hoopla! And on that note, let's kick it over to some community news. Community news. Well, first up, we have a write-in from our friends at the JCCP for the Muggles. That's the Junior Chamber of Commerce players. Hi, Yens. Just wanted to give you an update that the JCCP will be returning to the Hollywood Theater in July for a show. Tickets can be bought at the Hollywood Theater or their website, https colon slash slash www.hollywoodtheaterpgh.org. That's Pittsburgh. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate you the whole URL in there. Just got to get the uh, whole thing. Yeah, if you don't type in the whole thing, it comes back at error 500. <laughs> oh, well, Hollywood Theater, give me a call. I can fix mm-hmm. that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for writing in, Sam. We checked this show out on the Hollywood Theater website, and it looks like a ton of fun. This theater, where the show will take place, is actually a really cool historic venue. It started off as a silent film theater in 1926, where in addition to showing movies, the building served as sort of a community center gathering space, where people would gather for things like lectures, beauty pageants, and harmonica competitions. I competed there. You're getting much better at that, dude. I know, right? That's kind of scary. Hmm. So the theater has changed hands a number of times over the years, but it always seems to find its way as sort of an artsy community center as well as showing movies. The theater reopened most recently in 2011 and still hosts functions like Breakfast in a Movie, which honestly sounds like an amazing way to market Rocky, except you start serving breakfast at like 2 a.m. after the movie lets out. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, you're cool. a genius. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this sounds like a perfect venue for Rocky. It's absolutely gorgeous, it's a historic theater, and it's got its roots in community productions. Like, what else could you ask for? And we are so excited for our pals in Pittsburgh to be heading back to the stage. We are thrilled for you guys, and we are wishing Yins all the broken legs as we head back to new normal. And like we said, if you're in the Pittsburgh area and you're interested in buying tickets, you can find them at hollywoodtheaterpgh.org. The show is on Saturday, July 24th at midnight. The JCCP is an amazing cast full of extremely talented performers, and we cannot recommend their performances enough. Hell yeah. Next up, as you all know, Staycation Con will be held from July 16th to 18th. Now that's just a few weeks away, and they're going to be hosting a virtual art gallery for all of the ridiculously gifted artists within our community to showcase and sell their work. So today, we'd like to spotlight one artist in particular. So this coming Tesseract Staycation will mark the debut of Lola Montez Art, featuring a fully illustrated Rocky Horror-centric calendar for 2022. Lola Montez Art explores themes of sexuality, kink, and that weird feeling you get when something gets you curious and weirdly turned on. The calendar will be available for purchase starting July 16th, and if you're interested in checking it out, you can follow the links in the Tesseract Staycation Art Gallery. 
So we're thrilled to be able to highlight this artist and her calendar. Lola Montez is a New York City cast member, uh, full disclosure, and as such is very near and dear to our hearts. She is incredibly talented. I mean, Meg and I have a ton of her artwork hanging all over our house. Uh, some of it's Rocky themed, some of it's not. Meg's favorite collection is this set of uh, illustrations that she had her do on cocktail napkins at the bars after uh, Rocky Horror Shows. Oh, I'm one of them, aren't I? Yeah, they feature such things as uh, John uh, holding his penis, me holding my penis. Uh, she draws a lot of penises, It's a, and they're very, very well drawn. So, yeah, no, they're fantastic. We love her art. We've actually had the opportunity to take a look at some of the art for this calendar that she's going to be debuting at uh, Tesseract Con, and it is <laughs> adorable doesn't even do it justice. It's fantastic. Uh, we know she's been working really hard on putting this together, especially for the con. Everybody out there, you guys are going to absolutely love it. Yes, it is going to be great. The entire virtual art gallery is going to be amazing, of course. It's one of the things that I'm most excited to be able to check out on Con Weekend. But it does always feel especially nice to be able to rep your own cast members. If you're going to be viewing the gallery, please stop by and show Lola some love. And with that, I think it's time for everyone's favorite Nikki-flavored segment. The wrap-up and the goodbyes. That's all we got for today. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> we want to thank Sam and Lola for writing in to share their news and all our listeners for sticking with us through our <laughs> in real life chaos. Uh, we'll be back next week with a full length episode for all of you guys. We promise. We promise. We promise. Bye. <laughs> Not to be a tease, but next week is going to be extra special. We've got an amazing write-in from one of our listeners, Gretchen, who runs the Rocky Horror TikTok. She's got some great stories and a really good question for our Nikki Asks a Question segment. Aaron, I know you're really excited about this one. Oh, yeah, no. I, I saw her email come in uh, earlier this week, and I took a look at it. And, I mean, other than being an absolutely massive email, it had... A ton of great points and some a fantastic question right at the end. I'm super excited to get to talk about it. It's about a topic that we've discussed a little bit on the show before, but it takes it in a whole new direction. I'm going to have to hit up a couple of people, probably some old school members of uh, of the New York cast, and see if I can get some info out of them. And I'm, I'm really excited. We're going to be covering that next week. I'm pumped. If you're like Gretchen and you've got a question that you'd like us to answer on air for Nikki Asks a Question or some community news that you'd like us to talk about, like Sam and Lola, or even a cool story to share with the community, we would love to include it on our show. Just go to our website, rockytalkypodcast.com, and fill out our contact form to tell us about it. If you're enjoying Rocky Talkie, please help us out by rating, reviewing, and subscribing to the show. It makes the podcast more accessible to new listeners, which really helps us to grow the show. And if you want even more Rocky Talkie content, check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, all at Rocky Talkie Podcast. We'll talk to you next week. Well, me and Aaron will talk to you next week. We'll see if Nikki gets trapped in like a sarcophagus in the fucking Giza pyramids or something. I told her she needed to bring that bag of sand. Can't steal the little idol without putting the sand there. Yeah, gosh, have you ever seen Indiana Jones? It's a wonderful documentary series. It really is. Bye! See ya! Aaron. John. Nikki can go fuck herself. Yeah, yes, yeah, you can. <laughs> That's it. Boys night out. Let's go. It's from Billy Madison. Oh, yeah. Someone is peeling out in the background. I can't wait to move into a soundproof room where I can do this without having to stop recording whenever somebody burns metal. <laughs> Much better. And we noticed then that it was Kitty. The cat just sat down in front of the screen. Thank that you, is, cat. That is, I can't read the script, kitty. You can't read in general. <laughs> John's one-man show, Dedications, premiered I thought you were to... talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do a one-man show in 2015? Probably. Yeah, but I think Savannah was the only audience member. Anyway. Yeah, uh... valid. <laughs> and that weird feeling you get when something you get... Cur hmm. And that weird feeling you get when something, when you get what? <laughs> and that real feeling you get when...
something when you get curious and weirdly turned on <laughs> what when you do you when do when you <laughs> do you do you so much you could do anything the artist is your mom <laughs> <laughs>